Charlie Reimer, and I'm here to tell you that golfers, <laughs> we're different. We aren't afraid to go for it. We're dedicated. <laughs> and we never stop. Not every place gets us, but one does. Myrtle Beach, 78 courses, 60 miles of beach. You could say we were made for each other. The beach gets golfers. Golfers get the beach. Hi, and welcome into the Balls in the Air podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Reimer. We're coming to you from our brand new, super cool studio right here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the golf capital of the world. I'm hoping that your year is off to a solid start. Wherever you are, the weather's probably not very good. It's pretty good right here in Myrtle Beach. And uh, wherever you're gonna play golf this year, you better start booking early because golf courses all over the country are filling up, especially right here in Myrtle Beach. So please keep us in mind. You can always go to playgolfmyrtlebeach.com to book your golf vacation and do it early. You can't do it too early, folks. So. Thrilled to have a special guest today, uh, my colleague, my pal, Scott Tomasello. Scott is the director of events for uh, Myrtle Beach Golf Tourism Solutions. And he, folks, is the best in the business. He runs a tight ship. Uh, he runs all of our events here at uh, Golf Tourism Solutions, including the World Am, which most years has around 4,000 players. Imagine the logistics of that. Scott, welcome to the show. I know you're busy right now this time of year getting ready for what's going to be a huge year for golf in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, uh, golf has been booming in the area. Tournaments have seen significant growth in participation, uh, and it's been a whirlwind so far, but we're excited about it. And uh, Got a, good, got, a, got a couple of good ones coming up here soon. Well, let's get to one of those. Um, we're getting close to time for the Dustin Johnson World Junior Golf Championship. And Dustin uh, not only puts his name on the event, he grew up here in South Carolina, went to school at uh, Coastal Carolina. His coach at Coastal was Alan Terrell, who is still in the area, runs his foundation, his golf school down at uh, TPC Myrtle Beach and, and Merle's Inlet. And, and Dustin every year makes an appearance at his junior tournament. I know it's something that he really loves. Yeah, it, it's been great to see him come out to the event every year and interact with the kids uh, during the practice round day mostly so that he actually gets a chance to talk to them while they're a little more relaxed uh, and see him on the range hitting balls. and. That's kind of where this event started is his concept of giving back to the foundation, giving back to the community, um, and giving them a, a place to play golf in an experience like he's used to getting every week. So I feel like we've accomplished a lot of that so far, and I know he's really proud of, of what's going on around here. I, I tell you what, having grown up in South Carolina myself and, and playing uh, in, in a lot of the junior golf tournaments that, that we had here in the state, um, I couldn't imagine playing a practice round or coming out to a golf tournament. And we had a lot of great ones, a lot of nice clubs, uh, a lot of really good tournaments, but I could not imagine coming out to the golf course and the current number one in the world, which has happened quite a few times in the last six years, is walking around saying hello, talking to me. I, would, I don't know how I would have handled that. Well, I think for you and I, it might be a little different. Uh, since this field has gotten better and better, it's amazing how little it seems to affect some of these junior golfers. Like it, it, the elite golfers in the world, they are fearless. And you know, some of these folks say, I'm going to be Dustin one day. I'm going right. to beat him one day. So. It's funny to see the interactions. It's not necessarily an intimidation, but admiration, um, and, and there's no fear in that, but it, it's a great, uh, great relationship well, with some of the juniors. There's no fear on the outside, but on the inside, <laughs> even if they don't show it, they know sure. who Dustin Johnson is, especially when he's a current number one. I remember one year he'd just come off a win in L.A., and yeah. he comes in and he's hanging out and he had just the day before he showed up here got to be number one in the world and don't think for one minute those kids didn't know and appreciate that that's, that's right and i think there was another year he just came off a of wgc uh and there was another year he brought the u.s open trophy with him so it's, <laughs> it's really cool uh that he gets to uh try to shed some light on some of the things that he's done and and, and yeah i i'd like to uh try to hit a tee shot in front of him i don't think he'd go very far <laughs> <laughs> i know mine wouldn't not these days i've had a chance to do it a couple times with him and it wasn't pretty but uh, this event when it got started there's so much great golf out there for juniors 
and, and trying to get an event started, you, you can have big goals when you get going, but you never really know until you get in it what it's going to turn into. And, and from my point of view, this event has far exceeded any expectations that there might have been on the front end. Is, is, that, a, is that an accurate statement? It, it definitely, and there's still a lot, a lot of work to do, um, but it starts with uh, the investment in the community. The, the members get behind this event, the volunteers get behind this event, the TPC staff is incredible. Um, so it takes a lot of hard work, and, and at the end of the day, it's the golf course that I think brings the things mm. to the forefront. You have to have a challenging golf course uh, that brings out the best in people. It's, uh, it's a very difficult one, um, but that's you know, what it's all about, is trying to, to put these kids to the test. And uh, year after year, we've seen some really strong finishers come out of it because of what TPC has to offer. Yeah, TPC Myrtle Beach, a strong golf course designed by uh, Tom Fazio with input from, from uh, Lanny Watkins has hosted the, the uh, Senior Tour Championship or PGA Tour Champions Tour Championship. They've changed the name so many times I, I, I get caught up in it. The big event on the PGA Tour Champions was there and, and Tom Watson, as I recall, was the winner. So it really is an amazing golf course, the overseed that they have there. And then what makes it really interesting is, is that when we get to this event, it's, it's early spring and the winds are swirling. And that, those last six holes are tough coming down the stretch. Yeah, and, and I think 17 is a, is a brute uh, playing from over 200 yards sometimes to basically island green. Uh, 16, you, you think it's only 350, but it's a tough 350. That green is, is smaller than a post stamp. So. And then 18 just makes it really exciting because it's a it's a reachable par five for most all the players. Uh, so it makes a very good risk reward finish hole. And we've seen a lot of exciting finishes over the years. Well, strength of field um, is something that is extremely impressive. I, I, I know I'm not real good at what time of year it is. In fact, I'm I'm not real sure what month it is right now it's not my superpower but i know we're getting close to deadline uh, when the invites go out for the dustin johnson because i get calls from all over can you help my kid get in can you help my kid get in? i'm like listen i can't help your kid get in but i hope they get in but it, it really is trying to get in this field it, it is not easy because it is such a, 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 a strong field for the, for the boys and the girls. It is, and uh, I, I believe we'll have 90 junior golfers this year. Probably over 85 of them are ranked in the top 100 of their wow. respective genders in a variety of rankings. Uh, so basically, if you're not top 50 in the world in, uh, in the female side or top 100 on the men's side, mm -hmm. um, which is great, um, and, but we do still cater to the Carolinas. Uh, we love to see some of the homegrown talent uh, come through this event and, and uh, kids like Jonathan Grizz uh, or Macy Pate um, come in this year and in years past. So it's exciting to see some of the Carolina homegrown kids come through as well. well one of the coolest things, and, and I do remember this happening while world number one didn't come out <clears throat> when I was playing a junior tournament, when, when the college coaches start coming out to follow either the players that they've committed to or they might still be looking for players, that's something that really gets your attention as a junior golfer or the family of a junior golfer. Uh, Bill McDonald is a great friend of mine. He's a head coach at the University of South Carolina. We were teammates at Georgia Tech. I know he comes down every year. I see quite a few of the other coaches. And that, that's something, you, you know you've got a special event when you're seeing D1 coaches show up and watch your players. Sure, and it's not just the coaches. I mean, we've seen uh, probably 25 to 30 D1 coaches, uh, both on the men's and women's sides, coming out. And it's exciting to see who's committing, who hasn't committed, who, mm -hmm. who's thinking about what. And it's not just the coaches either, it's the sponsors. Uh, LA Golf jumped on board this year, which is uh, a friend of Dustin. So it's uh, with Taylor Mays involvement, Adidas' involvement, um, they're trying to get in front of some of these kids that are these elite junior golfers. Uh, so it's exciting to see not just who's watching, but who's investing in this event. The time is now. Our treasured game has never looked better. And your best memories are still to come. Escape and embrace every moment you have. Let's talk a little bit about some of the great players that have come through and, and won here. 
uh, Akshay Batia, who, who I absolutely love Akshay Batia. Going back to my Golf Channel days, uh, would, would interview him, and and um, he, he obviously has a great track record here. He's won the event once and was runner up at least once, mm -hmm. and um, he just recently won out on the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, and, and he's such a good player, he didn't even he didn't even go to college, which. There's plenty to debate about that as well. It seems to be like it's a good decision for him, but uh, that, that's a player, listen, he's got a future on the PGA Tour, and, and I know he's had a great experience here. Yeah, he, he started playing in this event in eighth grade, uh, which is one of the things we're excited about is, is trying to develop and see these kids grow throughout their high school careers. He actually started in eighth grade and finished in 10th place in his very first uh, appearance, um, and I believe the year that he won it, he actually committed to the event the night before that actually he was in town, he said, I can't, I can't not play in this. I'm in, I'm playing, and then he, three days later, he's hoisting a trophy. So uh, it was very exciting to see him uh, grow his junior career, and I'm excited to see him win on the Corn Prairie Tour, but he's not alone. I mean, we've got some really good uh, past champions who are in the collegiate ranks right now. Uh, Michael Brennan, Trent Phillips, mm. uh, Tyler Wilkes is, is, I believe, a sophomore now. Um, so it's, it's cool to see uh, some of those players grow and win. Uh, it's not just being on college teams, it's winning at the collegiate ranks, winning at the Webb or Corn Ferry ranks, it's, it, which is cool. It's huge, yeah. And uh, on, the, on the girls' side, Alexa Pano, who I've been around a ton since she was, gosh, 10, 12 <laughs> years old. I mean, her trophy room, <laughs> I mean, they've had to add on to their house for her trophy room. I mean, that young lady has won everything inside, including this event, a couple of times. And uh, you, you talk about someone who's going to have a nice career in golf. She certainly is. Definitely. And she's our only two-time champion. I believe she played twice and won twice, uh, which, is, which is great. She's, I believe she also has the female course record for the event. Um, but Jacqueline Petrino is coming back to defend her title. I know she's got a strong future. Um, we've got a great relationship with uh, Golf Ontario and Team Canada. So we've yep. got a couple of Canadian juniors coming down who they might, they might be hoisting a trophy too. I, I got to tell a story on, on Scott. Uh, as I mentioned, he's the best in the business for running tournaments from um, you know, some of the smaller events. A small event around here is 100 players and all the way up to, to World Am, which uh, give or take is around 4,000, and, and they all run seamlessly. But he takes his job seriously, and you have to. When you're putting on golf tournaments in, in, in the golf capital of the world, they've gotta be, it's got to be a tight ship. So, um, it was a year before last, I was shooting a TV show, and um, we wanted to go out on the golf course just to get some B-roll of the players. And so I, I jumped in a cart, and I had the, my crew with me, and, and I gave them the full briefing. I'm like, listen, th this is a world-class junior golf tournament. We can try and shoot some stuff, but the last thing in the world we're going to do is distract any of these players in any way. We'll get a peek over here. If there's a gap, we'll shoot what we need to shoot. If there's not a gap, we're coming in. So here we go out on the golf course. And, and I know how to get around a golf course from having played professionally and then also 20 plus years in TV. And here we go. And we get like halfway down the first hole. I look at my phone. It's Scott. He says, what are you doing? You're out on the golf course. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, Scott, we're, we're not going to distract anybody. And, and uh, as it turned out, we had a little peek, and there wasn't any place that we didn't do anything. But it took like five minutes of me getting out of the golf course with that crew for him to get on the, on the bat phone and yell so, at me. Sometimes I might take it a little too seriously. I need to relax a bit. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we, we want to treat it like a U.S. Open. You can't be driving through any rough. I know you wouldn't. Right. you got to make sure that we you're We were on the cart path. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to treat it like the U.S. Open, too. And you're wrong about this. You don't need to change your approach. Your approach is working perfectly. <laughs> Keep it Thank right. You, Keep it right where you got it. Um, so a little bit before I let you go, a little bit about Alan Terrell. As I mentioned, he was uh, D Dustin's uh, coach at, at Coastal Carolina. He runs the, the, the Dustin Johnson Golf Academy and, and Dustin's foundation. He's gotten all kinds of accolades. Uh, uh, he, he's been just recently, he has been the teacher of the year in the Carolinas. Um, just last week, I texted him because I saw that uh, he got ranked as a top 100 grow the game professional in the country. Yeah. And uh, talk about somebody that's got a big heart for, for junior golf. Um, I mean, he's a big guy anyway. I mean, we, we see eye to eye a lot. Of, he's got a big heart anyway. But nobody loves junior golf as much as Alan Terrell. Now, he's not a big talker. 
Uh, he might not express it, but through his actions, he loves golf and he loves what he's doing with DJ and for these kids coming in every year. Yeah, and that's well said. That the actions speak louder than words. And, and Alan is a, a quiet guy, but he most people don't know what he does because he doesn't talk about what he does. He he gives back to the juniors through club donations, complimentary lessons. He gives lessons to veterans. Uh, so he does a lot of things that people don't know about. And I, I love talking about it because he won't do it for himself. He but won't. Any proceeds from this event go straight to the foundation, go straight to give them back to the juniors who might not be able to afford a new set of clubs or afford to learn how to play the game. So Alan's done a lot for this event, for this community. Um, it's very impressive what he's done. And I, I can't even begin to list some of the awards he's been winning recently because he is the best in this area, the best in this state. I mean, he's, I, I, I truly thank him for what he's been able to do for this community. Well, I hope he sees this because after that testimonial we just gave, we're hoping to get some free lessons from him as well because he is one heck of a You don't need any. I, I, might, I might. I need a few right now myself. So Scott Tomasello, you're director of events for Myrtle Beach Golf Tourism Solutions. You run the Dustin Johnson World Junior Golf Championship, the World Am, and everything in between. Thanks for all the great work that you do here to bring world-class events to Myrtle Beach. Thanks, Charlie. And real quick, I should have them on the top of my head. I don't. Dates for the junior tournament? March 4th to the 6th, TPC. Myrtle Beach. It is free of charge to spectators. Come on out, watch some great junior golf. You're going to see the future of golf if you happen to be in the area and get out and, and watch that golf tournament. So folks, appreciate you joining us here on the Balls in the Air Charlie Reimer podcast. Uh, you can get this podcast wherever you subscribe to podcasts. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time right here in this really cool studio that they built just for me. Maybe a few other people will use it too. In Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the golf capital of the world.